Hello! I'm here live with you in Laguna Beach. The sun is actually out. I am extremely <laughs> excited. I cannot tell you how excited I am for this sunshine because it has been so gloomy for so long. Even most of this day has been gloomy. So it feels so good that the sun is out. Oh, <laughs> yay, 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 yay. I actually saw on the forecast that it shows thunderstorms in like an hour, which is hard to believe, um, but who knows? Weather can change pretty fast lately. So I am here to talk about uh, your husband or your partner or you're the masculine in your life showing up in the healthiest body, taking care of themselves. I'm going to bring my brother-in-law, Mike, in. I've been doing live streams with him a lot lately, and um, we've been having a lot of fun. I've been getting the most beautiful feedback from all of you about it. Um, so yay, I'm going to bring Mike on, and also just a little heads up that I am at the beach, and I'm also at the playground, so you'll probably hear noises in the background of my video. Uh, Fries might run over, he's playing at the playground over here, having so much fun. Um, so just heads up on that. So It's going to be really, really fun. This has been resonating. I wrote a piece of content about this earlier and was actually pretty shocked at how um, how much this is resonating with everybody. Hello, brother. Hello, sister. How are you? I'm great. Loving that beach behind you. It looks oh, nice and sunny out there. It's sunny. Is it sunny there? It is. I'm about to go hit it for a nice five miler when we get off here. Oh, my gosh. So good. I'm actually yeah, going to move a little bit because I'm getting some, like, noise from the road nearby. Can you tell me what it sounds like for you, Mike? Are you hearing me? I hear, I hear you, but, it's, like, right now it's really windy. Oh, it's really um, windy? Now it's not so bad. Now you, now it's fine. Okay. I put my hand over the thing, so. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a little bit of wind, but it's not bad. I can hear you clearly. Cool. Well, if it kicks up, just let me know. Cool. Yay. Woo! Okay, so Mike, this topic, is there anything you initially just want to, like, kick off with, or do you want me to roll with it? Uh, say it out loud for me, please. Do you have anything that you want to kick this topic off with, or do you want me to get started? Uh, say, say the topic out loud, but I just want to feel. Oh, okay. Is So we're talking about, I put the question, is your husband or your partner the masculine in your life? taking care of themselves are they in their healthiest best bodies or is that a very last last thing on their list scenario go go okay cool i'm also side note for everybody i'm gonna i'm like setting this my tripod up to be tall um okay so here's what i have to say on that okay So I hear this a lot and I was shocked at how many people were responding to this. Like I knew it was going to resonate with a lot of women because I coach a lot of women and they tell me about this, but oh my goodness, the response was huge. And, um, just so many women feeling like their husband is not showing up for his body. He's not caring for his body. Can you still hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Um, not caring for his body, putting himself last, putting his wife and his kids first which is one of those little like taboo kind of topics it's like oh well, he's putting he's a good man because he's putting his wife and his kids first but it's like wait is he being a good example of a man is he sacrificing himself does that make him a good dad husband i don't think so not in my opinion i think the best model of a father and a husband is a man who really takes care of himself you know what i mean that's huge. Absolutely. I mean, and, and when we started talking there, what comes up is how often do you talk to a man? How often has a man said, this is how I do things? Like this, not, not this is how I do things.
based on my condition things are based on how society told me but this is how i choose to do things this is how i choose to be a parent how i choose to be a lover how i choose to, to show up at work how i choose to run my company how i choose to to groom myself how i choose to eat my food how i choose to exercise and i don't you know i don't i wasn't shown examples of that growing up as a man myself so therefore i actually learned a lot of how i did my stuff from my mother from the feminine in my life so naturally when i started getting into relationships i was subconsciously searching for a woman that was like my mother that was going to show me that was going to teach me that was going to hold space for me to do things that weren't authentically for me and man had did that cause some friction in my partnerships absolutely and i'll tell you how i clicked out of it is when i started meeting women who were grounded were grounding or grounded in themselves and they were like I'm not going to tell you how to do something. I'm not going to show you how to do something. I'm not, I'm not going to have an incessant conversations and we go around and around and around in circles so you can figure out how you do something. Now, they never said that directly because nine out of ten times we'd attracted each other based on our our blind spots, our conditionings. But, man, when they uh, when they started doing that and I started having to look in on like myself, oh, that's the space you're going to hold for me, feminine. Wow. It's not, it's not telling me how to do things. It's not saying I need you to do this so I can be happy. It's, hey, you figure out how to hold space so I can be happy in my, in my own two feet. So I can, hold, I can be happy so the feminine can be happy in this space is what I would start to see. Wow. Yeah. And like the piece of content that I wrote this morning was about that concept that like, we think that the way we're going to change it is to have more conversations, to tell our partner more like, hey, you need to get healthier. You need to be like on this better track or blah, blah, blah. And all that does is just repel it and push it away further. Um, to attract it is what you're saying is to be a um, example and to, to be the beliefs that the man has got. <laughs> that he is on it that he will do that because when we think oh here we go like he's just not going to take care of his health and he's just going to do the same thing as I saw the other men in my life do and that's just what men do or maybe that's what I saw my father do um, or men on TV and movies if, I, if that's what I saw them do then it's like well that's how all men are but it's not how all men are it's just how we perceive all men to be and that story can change Absolutely. And, you know, and I've seen women, um, I've had conversations, I actually just ran to a woman that I've been working with for two years now, and she just came to the coffee shop, ran, serendipitously like an hour ago, we were just talking about the exact same thing. So it's really beautiful. That we're talking about it now, an hour later, is I've seen women just want to speak about their desires. This is how I want to see a man show up, this is how I want to see a man be. And I was talking to her, I said, you know, I said to her, I said, you know, Maybe not. Even, it, it, I said it out loud. If, if you, when you go back inside of self and you say, and instead of saying this is how I want you to show up, it, instead of saying that, it more so it's like, how am I asking somebody to show up? What am I saying to them? And is that part of like a cyclical nature for me that I've learned? Am I, am, am, am I just spouting out the same thing? This is what I need to make myself happy. This is what I need to be happy. And when we start to look at that, we say, well, hold on. I actually don't want to tell somebody to show up that way. I want to rewrite how I show up and just then see the mirrored reflection. And it, it, it never fails at this point. But we have to grasp the fact that we can't project it out, even though we will end up projecting that energy out eventually. That it will emanate out of us. We will see the, the, shit, the, shit, the shift and the change. But it comes first with like the hard truth of like, what am I projecting out all the time? What am I asking of other people when, that I'm not actually asking of myself? Absolutely. I mean, because how, for myself, I'll speak for myself, how frustrating it is it to have a conversation on what I want with somebody? It is the most frustrating. It is not joyful. It's not delightful. It's not all the things that the feminine loves to have a conversation that say, hey, can you step it up in this arena? Like, no, it doesn't feel good at all. So to come to myself and say, hey, okay, I'm going to really look at my stuff. I'm going to really look at my stories and my beliefs. What do I need to change for myself? That feels a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> And then, like, you know, I, I've, I've witnessed it with you in your life, and then all of a sudden you hit me up and you're like, wow, 
everything just shifted when I, when I said to myself, what do I want to myself? And I spoke to myself and I heard myself and I, you know, I think I've said it a lot now. When you hear yourself, other people will hear you. When you listen to yourself, other people will listen to you. And man, I, I get confirmation in those things from you. I'm just hearing you in your life, but also in our partnership as business too. Just and as brother and sister in law, you know, just showing up and like, wow, yep, that's that's a confirmation. That's a truth. Can't deny it. You know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, as you were talking about it, I Fries ran over here and he was like, "Mom, I got to pee. Where should I pee?" Uh, and, and before I answered, he said, in the bushes. And so all I had to say was, yeah, which was so nice to not have to like go into detail about how to do it. And then he ran over there and I was having this thought of like what exactly what you were saying was like, if he were to pee maybe in a spot, like he initially was like started to go to pee right here, um, which is just, like not the best spot to pee. And um, I just had a moment where I was just like, no, he's got it. He's good. And so he just ran over there, peed in a good butt. And I was like, that is actually what we're talking about. I mean, it's the not having to say things that's so nice and like the, hey, he's got this. And even if it had been another space, I would know that I wouldn't even have to be like, hey, don't be there. It would be more like, feel it, know it, know he's got it. And he'd take care of it, which you've seen. And so many people comment on this with surprise that he's so independent and he's so good on his own um, which comes from belief systems that we all hold about him anybody who's around him you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like I know you've experienced that too where it's like when you are out with guys and people are like complimenting him because it's like that's a reflection of our beliefs mm -hmm. around us you know some some for people to conceptualize nine out of ten times if they're in their 20, late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s right now, they were raised in a time where a mother wasn't necessarily holding space for a son to, as you just described, as to figure it out and hold that space for him to understand and be autonomous in his own world and to his own, to his own decisions, his own thought process. And most women weren't seeing that happen. Most women, most, most young ladies weren't raised by a mother where they were seeing a, uh, the woman hold that space. So nine out of ten times, you get to be an adult, you start attracting a partner. You're attracting a partner based off of how they were raised, based how you were raised. You know, so fries will most likely attract a partner that's going to hold a space for him because he holds a space for himself. That will most likely be this scenario. Then I have to also highlight the fact that Fries runs up exactly in that moment, and he's he the youth. If you get if you have youth in your family, if you're listening to this and you are a mother or a father and you have children or you're an aunt or an uncle, they are your confirmation. They they reflect back to you the truth so much it is mind blowing. But you have to learn to listen to it by listening to yourself first, because it's always there whether we like it or not. Yes. We're, uh, we're, on, we're on our 10 minute mark. If you, uh, if you got any closing remarks for us? Cool. Awesome. I, I'm so psyched we got to talk about this and go in on everything. Uh, let's give everybody a uh, takeaway, a little action step. If you're somebody who's experiencing this with the masculine right now, um, how about ask yourself where you believe that the masculine isn't going to take care of themselves, mm. isn't going to hold up their part of their sovereignty. Um, and maybe let us know in the comments. Like all these are open to comment later on and tell us what you're finding. We'd love to know. I'd love and to hear it and comment back. And I'm going to add to that, that takeaway. Sit, sit, when you do answer that question to yourself, sit with it for a little bit and see what comes up over the next couple of days, over the next day and how it manifests and reflects in your life. Like start to like listen to the, get, get the messaging that comes to you and see what really comes to you. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, that's it. That's gonna be good. Yeah. I like that, I like that addition. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Absolutely, sis. Love awesome. ya. Love you, love everybody watching. See y'all soon. Love ya. Happy weekend. Bye, sis. Bye.